immutable Linux distros are kind of the cool new kid on the block. And while they might not be for everyone, I'm not gonna run one on my main system, for a lot of people out there, they serve a really important use case. And when it comes to recommendations, a lot of people suggest using Fedora Silverblue. But as with any new tech, with any new software, there's always going to be some bumps along the way. And a bump is certainly a way to describe this. Reported over on the GitHub by Kisk, I honestly have no idea how to say your name, cannot update Silverblue, grub to make config error. So what was happening is you would try to do a system update through RPM OS3 upgrade or update, or you would try to do it through the GUI with GNOME Software Center, I think it's called. The result you get is exactly the same. And the way you load an update in Silverblue is you have to reboot the system because like with Android, Silverblue is using an image-based system. And then inside a Grub, you might have an older version of Silverblue. You'll have the version you are currently running, but the version you just installed is not going to be available inside of that list. There was no possible way to boot it, but it wasn't just affecting this functionality. So while you can't install packages on Silverblue in the normal fashion like you would on Fedora, there is a way to install packages. This is done through something known as a layer package or an overlay package. Basically what it does is it'll install the package and then will actually regenerate a new image and then you'll boot from that image rather than the stock Silverblue image. So when you try to boot into the image with what you think is the installed package, the package you just installed is not available. So with Fedora Silverblue, the version number is the version of Fedora dot the date the image was created in the year, month, day format dot another number if needed. So the earliest affected version, at least from what I have seen, is 36.2022.08.10.0, with the latest affected version being 36.2022.08.20.0. So within that 10 day range, there might be some outside of that range, but that's the largest range that I have seen. While things are being worked on on the back end to find the root cause of the issue and make sure this doesn't actually happen again, a few things were suggested throughout the thread to get people's systems updating again like they should. The first thing suggested was this right here, which I'm not going to leave in the description down below because this wasn't exactly a great solution. It was a good temporary solution and got an update done. The issue is if you did another update, it would then get you to run this command again because it wouldn't work. And then the next update again, and again, it wasn't exactly a good solution. The better solution did still require manual intervention from the user, but unlike this solution, only needed to be run once. And in terms of manual intervention, when looking at something like Arch, for example, this is on the much easier side of things you need to do. Firstly, what you do is run rpm-os3 update or upgrade. Update and upgrade are the exact same command. They are just aliases to each other. This is going to go and download a new image and normally would go and install it when the update process is working like it should. It is getting downloaded. The issue that is happening is with Grub. So Grub is the bootloader being used on Fedora Silverblue. And what this command does is regenerate your grub config looking for bootable OSs on your system. In this case, it's looking for a bootable silver blue image. And the reason why this can even run in the first place is this runs outside of the systemd unit that ensures the immutability of your system. So at this point, you may be wondering what was actually causing the problem? Well, if we look at some of the issues we have here, when running RPM OS tree status, You'll notice this error here, error bootloader write config grub to make config child process exited with code one. And looking at journal CTL, you see this issue right here as well. Error bootloader write config grub to make config child process exited with the exact same thing we were saying before. So clearly something is going very wrong with Grub, but is it something Grub is doing or something interacting with Grub? Is it caused by Grub directly or is it something wrong with Silverblue's installation? And this is when someone noticed a script that Grub is trying to run. So in a file called 10 underscore Linux, there is this section right here. And you might notice this line, echo command line rhgb quiet into this file slash etsy slash kernel slash command line. 
and on Silver Blue, Etsy and all of its ancestors are treated as read only. So if Grub tries to write to this file and the file doesn't exist, it's going to try to create the file, and it can't do that because it's read only, causing the script to fail. This right here is where we're getting the error. So according to another GitHub user called JLebon, there are two separate issues at play here. The first one being that Grub kind of had an issue with files created at the Unix epoch time. This was addressed in grub 2 2006 43fc 36 which is the version that Silverblue currently ships, and for some reason, Silverblue was generating some files for Grub that had completely busted creation dates, thought they were made in 1970, Grub had no idea what was going on with them, and that caused it a freak out for EFI systems. The second issue was introduced a lot more recently, in this commit right here, only 22 days ago. This is where that if statement creating the slash etsy slash kernel command line file was added into the code base. So this file is being used by something known as kernel dash install. Add and remove kernel and init ramfs images to and from slash boot. And if we go all the way down to the bottom, where it explains some of the files that are being used, we have this one right here, slash etsy slash kernel slash command line, exactly what we are looking for. So read by 90-loadentry.install, the content of the file slash etsy slash kernel slash command line specifies the kernel command line to use, basically the kernel arguments being passed into the kernel. If that file doesn't exist, slash user slash lib slash kernel slash command line is used. If that also does not exist, slash proc slash command line is used. Otherwise, kernel install conf root may be used to override the path. However, on an immutable system like Silverblue, this functionality is handled a little bit differently, and this file may just not be read altogether or shipped with the application in the first place. Specifically, in the case of Silverblue, the kernel arguments are managed by the RPM OS tree stack, and Grubby, which is what is used by Grub, is not shipped at all. This right here is a patch over on the Grub2 GitHub created by JLebon. Only write slash etsy slash kernel slash command line if writable. So if we go over to the files changed, we can see it makes a very simple change. All it does is checks if the kernel directory is writable, if it is, then it will go and write the file. In the case of Silverblue, it's not, so it's not going to write the file and the issue completely vanishes. Also, because the grub team is sensible, they went and merged the change. While there's certainly some back and forth about whether this is a good idea going forward, whether kernel install should actually be reading from that location, it still got merged the same day it got created, making sure the problem got dealt with pretty much as quickly as possible. So once you've done the update to escape the broken affected versions, the problem seems to just completely vanish. There are still some people commenting on the GitHub saying, hey, problem fixed, problem fixed, hey, the problem's fixed now, problem's gone. So it seems like everybody's having a good experience now, and if you have a newer version than 2022.08.20, or an older version than 2022.08.10, you can basically skip the issue entirely. So let me know, were you affected by this issue? Are you even using the mutable Linux distro? And if you're not, is it something you would ever, you know, actually consider using? In my case, if I ever built like a capture PC, I'd probably just put an immutable distro on there. I don't need to be messing around with it pretty much every day. But that's going to be it for me. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, you can check out my Patreon, subscribe, and I'll be paid a link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.